how Kigali became the cleanest city in Africa. Rwanda is known for many things, including being the land of 1,000 hills and home to the world's last remaining mountain gorillas. Rwanda's amazing transformation from a country with a dreadful history to one of the continent's most powerful economic engines is outstanding. Nonetheless, Rwandans are most proud of hosting Africa's cleanest city. Rwanda's capital, Kigali, is frequently referred to as Africa's cleanest city because, unlike the God-given beauty that graces the land, it is an attribute that every Rwandan consciously strives for. Another is that on the last Saturday of every month, people all throughout the country volunteer to work on projects aimed at improving the country's public areas as part of a mandated practice known as Umuganda loosely translated as coming together to achieve a common purpose. It takes an all-hands-on-deck attitude, effort, and discipline from the general people, as well as the institutionalization of activities and the passage of regulations that encourage cleanliness in all parts of life to keep Kigali clean. Kigali District has also installed rubbish bins across the city to urge people and tourists to avoid littering. Recently, a strict garbage collection system was put in place. Trash is collected every Tuesday and each family pays 2,000 Rwandan francs per month, while businesses pay roughly 10,000 Rwandan francs per month in public cleaning tax to ensure long-term cleanliness in the city and the country as a whole. Welcome to Thinkrich Media, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business, and personal development content to inform, motivate, and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe entrepreneurship, rather than global pity, is the key to Africa's growth and development. So if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. Unuganda is another essential component of Rwanda's cleanliness. Unuganda is a well-known tradition that takes root in the Rwandan culture of seeking answers to our issues through cooperation. It was the first step toward not just a clean city, but also a clean country, clean households, and an emphasis on personal hygiene for every individual. Since 2009, Rwandans have gathered in their communities or in their homes to work on a specific project, such as cleaning a public garden, assisting someone in repairing their home, especially during the rainy season when dwellings are prone to damage or planting trees. Every last Saturday of the month, the country participates in a national cleanup day. In Kinyarwanda, the term Umuganda means coming together in common purpose. While outside observers decry Rwanda's heavy-handed approach to security enforcement, the concept of cleanliness has acquired hold in Rwandan's national consciousness. The majority of Rwandans see it as useful community service rather than a kind of forced labor. People have grown accustomed to it, almost as if it were a way of life. Rwandans have established a national mentality that values and extols clean environments, and the cleanliness is not limited to Kigali but also spreads to rural places, because the president and cabinet members are active, the people feel included and enthusiastic. Yun Uganda thus becomes an opportunity for the country's leadership, from the grassroots to the government, to learn about what is going on in society. This aids to keep order and stability in place. This is why Rwanda has earned the reputation of being one of the safest countries on the planet. The heavy presence of security troops in the country attests to this. Through stability and sanitation, the Iron Fist has made Rwanda an economically viable country. However, as with any group, some people do not find Umuganda to be an exciting activity. Kigali shopkeepers grumble about slow business during Umuganda days. People who drive are inconvenienced by the ban on driving on such days, and the tough enforcement by the security personnel often discourages individuals from participating in this practice. Despite the fact that the government employs professional street cleaners, gardeners, and road crews, ordinary citizens contribute to community cleanliness. Kigali is establishing awareness initiatives to foster a hygiene culture. According to national government figures, more over 90% of Kigali households now have access to toilets and potable water. 
According to a 2017 report by the Rwanda Utility Regulatory Authority, the authority has issued nearly 200 licenses to cleaning service companies, the majority of which hire women displaced from shanty settlements. Kigali's government decided in 2009 to begin dismantling slums in the capital's poor suburbs those without piped water or electricity and replace them with new roads and dwellings. Some inhabitants were rewarded with a small new home on the outskirts of the city, while others received compensation ranging from $1,500 US dollars to $2,000 US dollars to assist them in settling in. The action was the first stage in an ambitious master plan to clean up Kigali, which has resulted in the city being acclaimed as one of the greenest and cleanest in Africa. During a World Economic Forum conference in Davos, Switzerland, UN Environment Program head Eric Solheim referred to Kigali as the cleanest city on the planet, referring to the city's absence of litter on the streets as well as green efforts. The award honored a mix of government initiatives that have made the Rwandan capital more cleaner than before, but have also sparked opposition from many displaced slum dwellers. In 2013, municipal authorities gathered up a master plan to enhance the city's environment while also trying to promote community participation, sustainable economic development, and access to civic facilities. One area of emphasis was traffic congestion. The Rwandan government invested $76 million to pave tiny streets, upgrade all major roads to dual carriageways and enhance signage in an attempt to ameliorate the situation. In addition, the government has allocated approximately 40 million US dollar to the relocation of a dozen enterprises from a former wetlands industrial region to a newly formed special economic zone. It has also begun to remove roughly 2,100 smaller enterprises, ranging from auto repair shops to restaurants that encroach on the city's wetlands with the purpose of restoring the city's wetlands to its natural state by 2020. According to the Rwanda Environmental Management Authority and the Ministry in Charge of Industry, owners of enterprises built illegally on wetlands are not being compensated. They will, however, be offered the opportunity to purchase new land in a suburban region, where they will be granted construction licenses, according to Busabizwa. Other legal businesses displaced by the cleanup effort are expected to receive compensation and help relocating by the end of 2019, using a nearly 30 million US dollar government fund, he said. It's only natural that not everyone will be thrilled with these kinds of innovations, but the vast majority will be. Some business owners are dissatisfied with the change. Residents of slums and landlords with property in the city's center districts have also complained to being transferred, usually to more remote places. Rwanda's streets are safe and clean as a result of a mix of policies, but Rwanda's desire to showcase modernity by adopting African city clean standards must not come at the expense of fundamental human rights. According to Human Rights Watch, Kigali's streets and other public spaces are kept clean at a cost. It is apparent that Kagame has not embraced liberal democracy in its purest form as prescribed by the Global North. Kagame has done an outstanding job in revitalizing Rwanda, but he must ensure that the country's people remain a top priority as part of its organic development program, aiming at meaningful economic transformation for a more just and equal society. In Rwanda's efforts to maintain modernity and a clean society, it should continue to care for its residents who may be prejudiced by capitalist economic changes. The state should ensure that these people have access to basic fundamental rights, such as healthcare, employment, clean water, and an education. Meanwhile, other African countries should learn on Rwanda's experience in developing cleaner communities. Thank you for watching. If there are any tips you think should be on this list but is not, leave a comment let us know. Help our channel grow. We hope this video has been helpful to you. Support us by liking the video, subscribing and turning on your notification.